What's up, guys? Welcome back to another podcast. Today we have Alex Cahoon joining with us, a love for teammate, sprinter, European under 23 medalist. Yeah, how you doing? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> uh, everybody didn't know, we've actually been training with Alex our third year. Third yeah, year, third year yeah. Yeah, and he's, yeah, he's great. All right, let's get into the podcast. Uh, I'm going to start off, obviously, Loughborough University because we all train there. This is Alex's third year, my Nathan's fourth year. And um, yeah, we're loving it. Alex in the sprint squad with Ian Hume, and uh, he's enjoying it at the moment. So, you want to go over a little, basically, what you do in, on Monday? What would you do in training? Uh, so, Monday's just like a set up into the week. So, just light aerobic, maybe a bit of kick, especially pre season. And then Monday night, we'll do power, just get back into things. And then Tuesday, kick set. Wednesday, top end speed. Uh, Thursday recovery because obviously sprinters need a lot of recovery. Yeah, uh, you've mentioned do. before on many well, blogs. Yeah, they, yeah, they don't really train, do they? Yeah, and then Friday's a tough day. Uh, power in the morning and just now we'll be doing more like uh, aerobic capacity in pre-season and then Saturday kicks it again. And obviously I do four gym. Three at the moment but I will be going on to four. Okay. So. Yeah, well, as Alex said, we are in pre-season. You've probably seen the blogs lately, uh, all the pre-season blogs. But uh, they, yeah, I mean, go well in Loughborough, your PB in, you came in not that fast and now you're going 49 low. It's great. What you say? Oh, everyone knows. What did you, what would, on your first day of meeting everybody, what were you thinking Well, on pre-season? I'm not allowed to swear, am I? Nah. No. 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 I don't know, I was very shy when I first came. Obviously, uh, didn't know anyone and I was, wasn't in the uni accommodation, I was with the college. Yeah, so, thought these two were a bit weird, but uh, so when you came up to me and uh, asked me to down that pint, was a, didn't even... Didn't introduce yourself, just like, oh, you're fresher down this point. Uh, yeah, so obviously it was with Gareth until uh, Christmas, then went with Ian, and then just got such a good relationship with Ian, and I'm still here with him now. And he's got me from 52 to 49, and yeah, it's going really well. Did you just come to Loughborough because of the, it was a big programme? and then Yeah, because obviously I do uh, my course as well, but that's not the main priority of why I'm here. I'm here to, to swim and Else yeah. Else yeah. I should take college more seriously, but I'm yeah. just I mean, full time. I mean, so. it's the main year for the for swimming as it's Olympic year, you know. So every kind of takes a back seat on their studies. Uh, just probably do a little less modules and then just grind it through till the Olympics. But yeah, it's gonna be great. One. Uh, to one of the Olympics, Alex is probably looking forward to these relays that are coming up for Great Britain. They got some great ones going, and Alex on this relay camp actually this week in Loughborough. The four that you've been on one before. Yeah, I was on yeah. one last year and then been invited to come again this week and it's obviously gonna be pretty hard to get on that relay, but it's definitely definitely capable I think. Yeah. Well Britain are shaping up to have a good four by one hundred. We'd like to see them in the world chance but they've got DQ and peaks, yeah. but I mean I'd love to see you on the relay. I mean I know. you may come with anyway. We yeah. see you train a lot, so I know it would be nice but obviously it would take a lot, but I believe yeah. I can do it, so I'm sat here today, so Yeah, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. I think I guess we just run straight through onto Bucks. I mean, obviously, we're in university, uh, we're in the British University, and that's why we compete at Bucks, and it's in Sheffield every year. We've got short course in November and long course in February. And uh, Well, which one do you prefer to start with, short oh, course or long course? Definitely long course. I'm not a big fan of short course. Uh, awful start, awful turns, awful underwater, so short course really isn't for me, but... yeah. Obviously, do it for the team and everything, yeah. and try win as it, many it is very fun to watch. I mean, personally, I never get to swim in the finals because like, we have distance events in the mornings, and uh, get to what I am then team mascot for the finals <laughs> with the air horn. But yeah, love to see Alex race hundred free. It's probably the most watched event, definitely, and yeah. it's probably the loudest too. It's gonna be good. We're gonna have a great bucks this season anyway. Hopefully, some very fast swims and bucks. My first, maybe Nathan's first bucks as well. Oh, no, well, first swimming distance events oh yeah because I went for the tinder back didn't go very well but yeah I mean we're, we're looking forward to that okay so we we'll go back to the Loughborough question I really actually want to know this because I know in my squad I think it matters but does it matter who you train with oh 100% yeah definitely obviously Ian's group is we're all class in there obviously you've got like Louise Connor Lewis now I could name all of them Lauren as well it's just we're all such a close group and we get all get along really well and mm-hmm. I think we definitely push each other yeah. a lot. I mean, I, I've said this time and time again that you need to train with somebody good to go fast, but 
I feel like in our squad, we were all very much the same level. I feel like you were probably the same as me when me and Nathan came in. You weren't the best, and then you grew to the yeah. to one of the main people in the group. And I think that's one of the main reasons why I've all come to Loughborough is just to really get involved in the group because you've always got a world champion, European record holder. <laughs> uh, coming, coming into race and I mean we saw that with the freshers actually at the moment we got Tyler in our group and Ruben just absolutely racing every single rep this morning we were just doing easy aerobic and Tyler just decided to race me on every single rep for like 2,000 metres but yeah, I know when Alex came in we actually did a couple of sessions together because oh, yeah. uh, Gareth was our coach at this time and we always used to have arguments in the pool about who's got a faster red time. Yeah, but I'm not even joking. I was actually googling. Uh, well, apparently there was this set that happened where he was on the other side of the pool, and apparently we didn't. I didn't know we did the same thing, and apparently he was watching me the whole time. Apparently he was beating me. I don't believe it. Every, every single time. I probably wouldn't beat you now because you're a distance, but back then, back then, <laughs> it I never always, happened. Back then, I did beat you. No, but Alex does think he'll beat Fleur, oh, who's yeah. a distance girl in our group. In what was it like five eight hundreds? Was it? Yeah, it was. I don't know what the set is. Yeah, it was like five eight hundreds off yeah. summit, and Alex thinks he can beat Flo and all of. It was like holding at red pace, and I just said I'd win the first three, then give up. So no, technically, I win yeah, you win overall. But, <laughs> but yeah, well, I mean, we're gonna see this happen at some stage, probably. Put it out there that Andy Manley did actually say that I'd win. Did he? Yeah. Oh, there you go. I didn't know that. You so. are quite good at aerobic, though. Yeah, yeah, for yeah, a sprinter. For a sprinter. Yeah, not but, too yeah. good. Yeah, I mean, your strength is the back end, isn't it? Would you say? Oh uh, yeah. I mean, you got yeah. It's all right. Yeah, not can't get it from Definitely not the start. No, not the start. <laughs> Definitely not the start. Yeah. Um, I mean, we can carry on with the training group as we were talking about before. Do you think? I feel like sprinters have big, bigger personalities. Personally, oh, and um, no, they're well, really. I would. I don't. I don't know how to describe it, but like, the more like in your face, like more testosterone. Yeah, though. more alpha. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Well, it wasn't like that until a certain little Irishman came along. <laughs> And boosted everyone's egos by staring himself in the mirror <laughs> but yeah definitely our group's like oh, so good especially obviously now we've got Lewis but before it's just me and Connor were like the only blokes in there so yeah. we got really close and mm-hmm. we push each other yeah I think it, I think it really helps having well I was saying you've got Lewis now who's one of yeah. the fastest British and freestylers ever and then you've got Connor who's the one of the fastest backstrokers yeah uh, well in Ireland and then he's obviously like world junior silver medalist as well and um, yeah I mean we can see it from our group I mean our group's probably a little more chill than yours your group there's always some drama going yeah, on there's always drama yeah, it's but boring without drama isn't it? yeah very very true um, how about we go on to so last season you went on a couple of camps you went to South Africa the famous South Africa <laughs> yeah the worst trip I think we've ever been on <laughs> the, the first week was unbelievable like we all train really what, well. What were the facilities like? Oh, yeah, it was, it was really good. Like The centre we had a really good gym, and obviously they love rugby out there, so there's loads of big blokes in there lifting heavy weights. And then uh, the pool was like a five-minute Uber, which was and like a half-an-hour walk, but the pool was unbelievable, and obviously the weather was, was great as well. And then we just one day all got hit by some uh, disease <laughs> and uh, made us sit on the loo all, all night, all day and all night, and... Uh, yeah, it was, it was a struggle. I have got a funny story, actually, about uh, me and Connor. So we got about two or three days into our diarrhea problems, yeah, and uh, there's this certain thing called piles. And it's like, <laughs> but everyone probably knows what piles is, and it is really sore on your ass. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I've heard a lot of stories about this trip in what? terms of, like, haircuts as well, yeah, going on, sunburn as well. Yeah, the UV was so high, and we just, obviously, were English, so we thought we could hack it but we couldn't and then I just think like our group just got so close yeah on, on that trip. trip it was bad but then it was good yeah. because well, like, I mean you all went through that experience together, yeah and we all like, just we all just were so open with each other like there was no like embarrassment we just all told our stories of our illnesses <laughs> and obviously everyone found ours quite funny but yeah I mean well South Africa it's not just about get ill I mean you went on some good you went to safari yeah, you went uh, up the tabletop mountain yeah scenery you went to a vineyard as well just little penguins yeah, well, I didn't go to that because oh. I was sat in the loo. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, the scenery, like Table Mountain was like, I'm, I'm scared of heights, so it's a bit of a struggle for me. But uh, once you're up there, it was unbelievable. Yeah, it was unbelievable. Yeah. yeah, it looked really cool. And then obviously your main character in our vlogs, especially the turkey vlogs, 
they are some of the best camps we really go oh, on. Oh yeah, Turkey's unbelievable. Yeah, so. we love it. Especially, well, I mean, I, we got a little bit of a in the Turkey with the sprint group because oh, yeah, 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 but yeah, um, the training, story. yeah, basically because I said it didn't train, then I I put in all the clips of them not training in the vlog, and some certain people got a little bit uh, annoyed at me, but uh, I mean. Turkey's one of the best trips I've ever been on. I've been twice now. Nathan's been once. You've been twice? Been twice, yeah. yeah. And uh, I think oh, I think the whole group kind of comes together there. Yeah, definitely. It yeah. is very fun. And um, yeah, I mean, we get some serious work done. So yeah, that's the best two weeks yeah. I've ever, I ever yeah. have every time I go there. Yeah. yeah. I actually remember, little, uh, if Ian's listening, I actually remember the first time we went. Well, Ian actually took me a couple of sessions. Sammy loves taking the distance boys a couple of sessions because we don't really complain. Um, we just hit it hard at, like for like, an hour of a hard set so he kind of likes out sometimes and then Andy takes them so they kind of switch roles and I remember last time I went I don't think you yeah the first one a lot of the sprinters are saying that they prefer Andy to take him well, I wouldn't say that because <laughs> I like him a lot I, I like I actually love him coaching me because I think my first year I don't know what Andy I think and I'm not sure what Andy was or was Andy taking the sprint group but they swapped at one point for a bit and Ian was taking us for our short course sessions and he was just literally he gives you so much like um, like motivation when you're swimming like he just like come up to me start screwing at me he's like you need to get your name on that wall with all the banners of people's names at the end and yeah I, love, I mean Ian's one of the best coaches I've ever met probably along with Andy this is why Loughborough's get so good at the moment I think we can move on to uh, talk about Alex's rugby career I'm not sure how long it was for. Short, yeah, short lived, really, but I did dip into that a little bit. Oh, you asked the question. Well, yeah, I guess Alex obviously was um, an academy rugby player for Gloucester. Um, that's where you're from, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and um, yeah, I mean, just take it through the academy. I never know. I'm not going to lie, I me and Nathan aren't that big rugby fans. We do watch it and we obviously support Ireland because. They're obviously the best team, and they're going to win the World Cup this year. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, because you got them in the sweet, sweet state. state. Yeah, yeah. So. but take us through like the academy of Gloucester. What was it like? Yeah, obviously, I love rugby growing up. I'm a big Northampton fan, and uh, played it really competitive with my brother. We always used to play together, and then uh, got to secondary school, and they selected me to go on uh, to Gloucester Academy. So I had a, like two or three years in there. I just. I just didn't enjoy it. it just wasn't for me I just didn't really like the environment that much and then obviously I still swam on the side and then I took that swimming a little bit more seriously but I was at Siren Sester so mm-hmm. as seriously as you can take it and then I just completely dropped it just fell out of love with it really just I think I think the game's gone soft there and I just yeah just not a big fan yeah, of it anymore swimmer saying rugby yeah I know yeah <laughs> I just yeah I can't stand watching rugby really anymore yeah. Well, we don't. We, well, I, we're watching the World Cup at the moment, yeah. and we know a lot. Of, a lot of our friends from university yeah. play rugby. Fun facts as well. I actually um, was in uh, in the Olympics. Obviously, we're in the village, and I was in the flat beside Greg Ushay. Love Ireland, obviously <laughs> Ireland rugby sevens player. There you go. Just a little fun fact there. Mm. So obviously, sprinters love the gym. That's I'm gonna guess that's the main thing that they like. And uh, what what would be your favourite? The movement in the gym, exercise. Move our bench press. Bench press. Chris will tell you as well because I always bang on about it. I want to do it more than once a week, but Chris doesn't let me. Oh, we were doing it. We were doing it three times a week last season. Well, I wasn't. I had to wait till Friday oh. <laughs> every week to do bench. But yeah. uh, international bench day is a Monday. Yeah, well. Apparently so. Yeah, I need to uh, tell Chris that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, just just the gym partners I've had. Like, obviously, I was really close with uh, Dave Bloomfield because he came up. To Ian from Gareth with me, and yeah. he's an absolute monster in the gym. So, what are your maxes in the gym? Uh, Max three lifts, 120 bench. 120, that's good. Yeah, that's, well, that's good for up. Yeah, that's yeah. good for Our yeah. max is like 75. 75 for bench. Yeah, but I should be doing that. <laughs> so, shouldn't I? Yeah, do you know what? Uh, I think we saw that video on Instagram of Florent Mamadou. He did like 160 for three, didn't he, on bench? Yeah, okay. Yeah, is that what, what are you aiming for? What are you aiming for for bench? It's just as What's like, a, what's like a good amount would you say? Oh, over 100 is obviously great. Yeah, I think this season I'd like to be pushing 130, 30. 135. Mm-hmm. Tr- just try and be like Connor. What is, what is Connor? Well, Connor's 120 as well, but his arms are yeah, twice I mean, as short as mine. So yeah, you've got, he should be doing 140, really, realistically. <laughs> what's your squat? Uh, 150. 150. 
Is that? Like, but I've got to go lower down, haven't I, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really joking. Yeah, that's all right. But then you've got a Dave, you can do 160 for reps. And, oh, really? Yeah. And then... You pull up. Pull up. What did you uh, got 52 and a half after three weeks off oh, okay. last week, so I don't know how, but I'll take that. Yeah. We actually did something new in the gym today. It's actually on the vlog um, that will be coming out after this podcast, but... Uh, we've done this thing where we do 12 minutes of just pull-ups. Um, you've got to hold up the top <laughs> for three seconds, and then you so you go up, three seconds, wait, come at the end, and keep doing it as many times as you want. And then in 12 minutes, you can take in how much rest you want, but it's how many reps you can get. And uh, how many did you get today? Only 60. 60? How many did you get? I got 50. Yeah, I got 67, everybody, right here. I think Connor actually got 69. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah so I mean he's obviously a big gym guy you see him a lot on the vlogs in the gym you probably saw him he just he loves the yeah, well he loves the camera doesn't he he, yeah, he the loves time. the camera yeah I've never like looked at myself in the mirror in tents before but the minute I got to Turkey with him like <laughs> I was just as bad as him yeah actually when we were in Tenerife for our commies uh, camp and Europeans camp it was, he was just constantly, oh, let's go to the gym and do some triceps. triceps. <laughs> <laughs> and then just take him, him, me, him and Jack McMillan, just taking photos and just, obviously I'm the smallest and the palest out of us all. Actually, no, Connor is like a kind of a ghost. Can't yeah. Lie. Yeah, I remember in Turkey, like I could hardly see him. Haunt, haunting the place. Yeah, he haunted the pole. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so everybody just knows that we all came back from under 23s, which were actually in my home nation island in Dublin and Alex's uh, first Seeing international for Britain. How'd it go? Tell us what you did. Tell us your times. Tell us your medals. So, I kicked off for the 53 on Saturday. I had a P, uh, PB that night. Uh, only a slight PB. Just missed out on a medal as well. Came fourth. Then the next day, it was, a, it was a tough day. I had four 100s in one day. And for me, that was pretty tough. So, I had two PBs. I obviously wanted quicker. But I had a good relay split at the end. And obviously, got my silver medal. With the the group was really yeah. good. Yeah, I mean it, it was a great meet, and um, yeah, I mean you probably saw Alex on the podium because he put it at the end of the vlog. But um, it was I actually really enjoyed the meet. I know it's for me it was my second meet of the year, and Alex is big international, so I really loved watching him swim, and it was uh, I mean I just loved it overall. Yeah, I thought it was, it was really well run. Yeah, it's and I thought we I mean we never really talked about what happens after the swimming. And I think we should mention that. Yeah, so obviously I organised the after party for the whole thing. Well, I say organised, I just directed everybody to the right place. Uh, but, I mean, you got to see the sights that night in Dublin. It's obviously a great city. I mean, to be honest, I hardly actually have been around Dublin, which is kind of cool because we always went Temple Bar with about, I want to say, like 400 swimmers with a... Yeah, a lot. It was a lot. But, yeah, yeah I mean, it was a good time. What did you think? Of yeah, it's the first time I've ever been to Dublin and Temple Bar was, was really good. Expensive. Yeah, like, well, yeah, it's like eight fifty a yeah, pint. Yeah, like Dublin, that. but it's just like London, isn't it? Really. Yeah, I suppose. It's like a big city. So, mm -hmm. we actually have a question in from funny enough, Faz. She's put Faz in. She's asking a question. More, more he says, "Can Alex finish the song? When I was young." When I was young. Oh come, oh, come on. on! Finish the song. Yeah. When I was young. Oh yeah. I had no sense. I bought a fluke. Fifth. I can't say it all. Uh, <laughs> got bad language in it. But. Uh, so, how about we have the hardest set you've done and like, talk us through it? Yeah, we've well, had a few hard sets, but the one that comes to mind is I was going against Andreas 10 50s max off three minutes just to see how high I'd get the lactate. And it was tough. I think I got to 19 or 20 was my highest lactate. And it was funny because I was obviously was out of breath and I, I felt sick. And then because I, when I was training with Dave, he did it as well. And he ran out the door and he was like being sick and out there for ages. And his lactate was only like 11. <laughs> and he was trying to tell us that breaststroke yeah, was the hardest stroke. Yeah, he, he didn't know distance numbers for lactate. But yeah. I think um, we, we could talk a bit more about training in Loughborough and um, basically what you do as a sprinter. Because to be honest, we're looking at it from the outside perspective. We actually don't know like what you do, like what is actually in the session. If you was went to Ian, if I was to say it was a swimming novice and they wanted to know like how, how a swimmer train, how a swimmer train. Tell, take us through like a session, how it, the structure and what you do, and give us an example. Uh, 
I think Ian gives us pretty hard warm ups and prep sets. So just like like doing top end speed uh, 25s, 100 race pace to really get us going and like try and build as much lactate in the, the prep set and then obviously chuck a suit on, do a bit of priming and then do you want to talk for a set? Or? Yeah. Well, I'm just going to ask you this question before you talk through the set. Do you think you should wear race suits in training? Oh, 100%. Yeah? yeah definitely. You can, it's well, a massive difference. Yeah, Especially you, for like top end 25s. For yeah. like that. Do you think it's good for like just just the feel like for the feel yeah confidence. I think it's like feel confidence yeah exactly like I can't go that quick without a suit on really and then the minute like I'm in tape and I've got a suit on it's just like a massive difference and like hearing a good time is it's just a massive confidence boost going into like Dublin and stuff what would your taper look like for a I have quite a big one to be fair I think mine's f- three weeks Connor's is six weeks I think Connor Fred <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking yeah it does have a long taper though uh I dropped down to first week of maybe three gyms from four, just still doing a lot of work. It'd be like 375s or uh, 335s and like loads of rounds of that. And then each week we'll just get less and less. And then obviously I struggle, like my kick's not great. So I try and avoid kick sets in mm-hmm. tape because I just yeah. want to rest them as much as possible. But then just, I'll, yeah, when it gets down to like the week before, I do about a 10K week and do you yeah. do a lot of kick in the season? Yeah, because I'm Ian bangs on about how bad I am at kick. Yeah, we're not very so, good at kick yeah. either. Yeah, especially long course kick. I struggle. I actually, I think I'm the decent. Well, we're actually me and Dan have actually moved up to the B times from the D times. No, don't, well, don't put me and you in the same comparison. Here. You've moved up from the C to the B today. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I, I'm stuck at B at the moment. I'm, I'm touching you, on the end. To be fair to me, if you look at my squad, they're all like Connor's. Unbelievable at kick. Lewis is good at kick. Louise yeah, 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 is good yeah, at kick. But we also just carry your squad. You cheat. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have this right. So everybody at the moment, we're in preseason. So we're all training together, especially on the week, the the Saturday where we do our big kick set. And um, we have a rule in the distance group. Well, it's mainly Andy's rule because people like to abuse this part of the set. How many strokes? Comment down below how many strokes you're allowed to take during a kick set. Because we're allowed just uh, you've got your hands on the ball, you're allowed to pull into the wall. This man over here must take about three in, about 20 out or something like that. There's something about, if we do 100 kick, it'll be about 40 metres. Uh, I think that's absolute rubbish. <laughs> I I don't take any on the way out. I If I'm in like a, a main set and I'm knackered, I will start the flags <laughs> and I'll try and get as many strokes in as possible. But if I'm going, if I'm in short course and it's a good kick set, I'll do one in. One in. But you got to remember, I'm, if you look, compare to someone like, I don't know, Flair Lewis. Yeah. I'm double her size. <laughs> so me doing one strokes like five meters compared to her. Yeah. Like nothing. So Well the worst ball this is was probably Hector. Uh that man used to swim like eight meters in and then <laughs> swim eight meters out as well. I just feel like you need to carry the momentum. Yeah. You guys have to restart and if I want to get like a fifty kick PB <laughs> I've I've gotta be going into that wall pretty quick. I got called out for swim swam because it was me, Harry Shalleman and Louise yeah. when he came to film yeah. and every single comment was like oh the guy on the outside lane is swimming <laughs> and I was like I literally took two strokes uh-huh. but I was trying to get a 50 PB so yeah. what about swim swam you yeah. get call <laughs> yeah, well, I get call out so much I, actually I remember Carl Soft when I was talking about this asking people to read the swim swam comments and I actually you don't read them I, I don't read them I don't actually read them Nathan just comes in my room and shows me these yeah, yeah but I've been slated in the swim swam comments so yeah, many I have times. as well like. yeah. <laughs> but they are funny some of them it was one of them compared to Lily King yeah somebody said I was Lily King I mean obviously not a bad swimmer, no, but I'll be happily compared. I'd, I'd 100% would have taken the criticism if I'd have won. <laughs> I, I came last by a good, like, three or four seconds. And, like, why why would you why would you need to rip into me when I've, when I've lost? It's not like I've won and celebrated on the lane when I've beaten them at 50 kick. But, yeah. well, would I, you not say if your kick was uh, quicker, then you would be able to come back? Like, Carl Sharma is, sorry, it's, like, one of the fastest kick times in the world I'm not, I'm not sure well I hope well, he probably does because he, yeah. he's got like the fastest back end yeah it's ridiculous. Of each it's ridiculous yeah. yeah I mean I think well I think we just talked about okay let's go back to your main set and then your session how will it be structured so um, give us an example of a main set something like that main set would be like maybe a dive 25 or a dive 35 maybe a dive 50 
depends where we are in the season then that's pretty much our front end done because you can't really do much because the lactate builds so much and then obviously a big factor to mine and probably the rest of the group is our back end speed so it'd be like 450s a 25 front end speed a 50 easy 50 and we'll do that a couple of times I, I have always this question for sprinters it's like a, so in ours we have like maybe like 3k 4k at main set and it'll be like you'll, you can you can like build into it because obviously you, it, you sometimes do and I, I just can never like get up for like just a 35 fast or something I just can't I don't have like the yeah, that, that's like me saying I could never get up to do 5 800s I couldn't even do 1 800 <laughs> so yeah I don't know it's just that's just what we enjoy it's just did you take many like supplements before the uh any sets like no caffeine? i try and avoid taking i have a coffee before but like i won't i try and avoid popping like gums because i just want to save that for like actual race days but just take caffeine before races yeah i take a lot i take four gums four in jamel yeah four You're big yeah. big man yeah yeah it's, um, i take a lot i took a lot at dublin because i had the hundred i took four and i had a relay an hour after so i took three more <laughs> And I form, I could feel it in my heart. And I, just, <laughs> yeah. I think we, we take 300, don't we? 300, yeah. yeah. We take the tablets. I think yeah. Lewis is the worst. I've heard he took like 800 once. Yeah. Oh. Do you take the gum? So you take yeah, the I gum? take gum. I have a coffee and then I take a gum. Uh, why, have you ever tried the tablets? No. Oh, you should try them. I probably might try them at Bucks if they... Like superhuman, I think. I just feel like the gum just hits you straight away. Oh, it's you use the tablets, trust me. I'm telling you, like... I didn't. I used to take the gum, right, and I stopped taking them because I felt like it wasn't. I was just getting the like mintiness in my eyes, and it was kind of stinging. Yeah, up. I feel like if I have too much gum, it like really makes me gag. Like yeah, what well, and you're chewing for so long. Yeah, like, yeah. You have four gum. You have four you're gum. <laughs> you, you have four gums. You're like che- you're gonna be chewing for ages. Like I, I take the tablets, and I only take like two tablets, right? And I'm like, as soon as I get like after my warm I am buzzing like my yeah. eyes wide open you take it hour, hour 15 before yeah just around that I thing. get really aggressive when I take <laughs> <laughs> no, I do get angry like I think Alex Ragazzi came up to me and was like are you alright because I was like it looked like I was going to try and fight someone that's what I, that's what all you yeah. hear from like, this, like Adam Peasy uh, I, I always hear like he feels like he gets like the aggressive mode before a race she got like absolutely attacked oh yeah Lewis is it as well he's he yeah. stays, doesn't we he? We all love the Lewis Boris. Yeah. Like, all behind the back. No. Yeah. See, for like pre-race priming, do you do like a lot of like priming stuff? Yeah. I, d- I didn't used to, but then I uh, started wearing like heated trackies and Connor told me that his fastest time he ever did, he was dripping in sweat. And then I just thought I'd give it a go. Did like just a standard priming and then I had my heated uh, track seats on, which were so good. And then obviously put a hoodie and t-shirt on as well and I was sweating so much and then it was like the fastest I've ever been. Do you, uh, when you get on to the, when you're like in the call room, so you're just wearing the heat or everything? Yeah, I, I only turn them off the minute I'm about to walk out. Oh, it's like okay. a final. When Do you listen to out. music as well then? <laughs> yeah, I have started. It's just, honestly, it's Connor. I didn't <laughs> listen to music at all. I'm quite like a chilled person before a race. I like to chat to like either Ian or like Chris who's there. I just like to talk to people so don't get too anxious. But then Connor's come along and I'm listening to the, like the most unheard of <laughs> yeah. stuff. Like, yeah, yeah, I don't know if any of the... Lower stuff. Yeah, right. yeah. Cause we're like big fans of the Trend Twins. Uh, we're not yeah. on drugs, we're not on drugs. <laughs> um, and it was just, their music is just like, I love it's it. It's just a lot fair. of bass. And like, I, yeah, and I try and play it when I'm in the gym and everyone will tell you how like they hate Ian Connor's music, <laughs> but... It probably gets me pumped. So. Uh, what's your favourite... Could you like, name your favourite song? Yeah, I actually timed it perfectly. So when I was walking out to the final in Dublin, I was walking out to Batman the Menace. You think I'm hiding in the shadows. <laughs> <laughs> so I was walking out to the Batman theme. It was right, it's good. <laughs> it, was, it was good. It was like... Per- it's just as I was actually walking it a bit of swag and waving to the crowd. <laughs> And I got Batman blowing in my ear. So. Yes. Well, I think I listened to a song called Dreams and Nightmares by Meek Mill. That's yeah. my favourite one. I, I think I put that up as mine as well. I actually listen to music in the chorus. I try to chat to people. A bit more fun. But I was actually just going to talk about the chorus. Do, do you think, like, in sprint, I mean, distance, you can't, it's not really like a mental battle in the chorus. People aren't really, like, in your face. Like the Chandler Clow scene of him shadow boxing. Yeah. 
in, in like obviously sprint races, I'd say the corners very different. But we're all very friendly in our horns. I feel like yours is more intense. Yeah, I've, yeah, yeah. It's I don't really know to be fair. I, obviously, I chat to everyone, and if anyone comes up to me, but like, I think obviously fifty, there's no mistakes, and everyone overthinks and is a bit more worried, so they're a bit more tense and like, right, come on, you switch on now. And obviously, fifteen hundred, it's fourteen minutes, so you got like a lot of time for like race strategy and yeah. like a 50 for example it's just mm-hmm. head down and do you, prefer, do you prefer like the 50 where it's just in a like what's the splash and dash yeah I prefer the 50 because it doesn't hurt the uh, 100 like I get out and I'm just, like my legs are just gone do you hold your breath on the 50 I take one breath around 35 one breath how many strokes you know that no I don't know uh, <laughs> high high yeah, probably a lot uh, what? So when you dive in, what are you thinking in the fifty? Just nothing. Yeah, I always try and think like I don't know my perfect race. Cause I just can't remember it. Like yeah. I just I can't can't picture it because it's just over so quick. But I try and get up as as quick as possible because I know my strengths, my like straight rate and speed. Uh-huh. So I don't stay underwater a lot. Cause that's not my yeah. go-to. So I right, got a question for you guys. Uh, Who is the sporting goat? It overall overall I actually have seen this on TikTok by the way people are like putting their like top 10 together I just want to say how's Michael Phelps sort of the top 10 to start with people don't yeah, rate d- swimming do 10, they yeah. well yeah it's just we need the Saudis to come into swimming yeah. but they will <laughs> be on do ISL that's all yeah. the Saudi yeah. ISL ISL trust yeah. me get an ISL in Saudi would you join the ISL if it was in Saudi yeah I think that where the ISL went wrong is I think they should hire the, so obviously it's going to be you got, you'd have to build up to it but the, they would have to hire all the coaches and it'd be like a football team kind of thing where everybody would just go train with that team yeah. and get traded. Yeah, 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 I agree. Because you don't see like, uh, you know, they're all like, oh, I want to go to my home coach. You don't see like footballers complaining about the bloody coach they had like 12 years ago. Yeah, true. But yeah, but it's hard to compare footballers from there, isn't it? Mm, I guess. Yeah. Um, if we're talking about sports and heroes or like who's the GOAT? Go through all the sports then. All sports. Or just like the main sports. Okay. Football? Well, well Ronaldo. Ronaldo. controversial. It's not controversial. It is it's straight messy. Fact. It's Cristiano Ronaldo. No, no, you can't say that. I can. It is, it's messy. It's Cristiano Messi's won a World Cup. It's, it was rigged. What? It was rigged. And he went to, and he's gone to um, America. Yeah, come on. It's the easiest league in the world. Yeah. Maybe the look at everyone who's gone to Look at all the players that have gone to Saudi. Yeah. I, I don't know. All right, I feel uh, like Messi's. What do you, you NFL, NFL? You've got Tom Brady. I say. You've got sorry, Nick said Tom Brady though. Uh, <laughs> NFL, you've oh sorry, NBA basketball. You've got who are you saying? I'm saying NFL. Michael Jordan. I'm not. I'm saying LeBron James. Everybody says. I don't MJ. watch. I don't watch basketball, but I would probably go LeBron James. Yeah, I think LeBron James. Uh, and uh, golf. Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods. Uh, I'm running out of sports here. Uh, swimming. Swimming. You say golf. Right? Down with him. <laughs> Nathan with him actually. Uh, uh, Na- yeah, Felt, Nathan's I think. Phelps. Uh, I think if Dresser didn't take that time out, I think he could have challenged it. You th- nah, I actually, I'm gonna go a rogue one here, right? Grant Hackett. Let's go. That man had the best. I reckon he's probably got the best three swims that a world champ put together. I think he got three world records in one. Actually, no. Yeah. Michael Phelps beat that. Don't matter. Take out what I just said. <laughs> Grant Hackett's uh, up there. Michael Phelps probably the best. We've got athletics. Obviously, Usain Bolt. No. Yeah, no. Usain Bolt. Who's, who are you going to say? Actually, that Jamaican uh, woman who was like winning for over 10 years and 100. What's the American who's the judge? Gatlin. Gatlin. Justin Gatlin. I mean, he's obviously not the goat. <laughs> <laughs> Usain no, Bolt. I don't know. Adam Jamili. <laughs> <laughs> I don't actually know. I don't want really watch yeah. so much athletics. Uh, wait, I'm trying to think of another sport. Another sport. Give tennis. One but tennis. Tennis is a controversial. Oh, oh that is another. I've had Djokovic. Yeah. I'd I probably like, say Djokovic now, but I've always been a Nadal fan. I like Federer. No, Nadal is not the question for the goats. I think Nadal. he is just because how good he is on one court. Like he's. Well, he's not the greatest of all time, but he's no, but he's still one. Nick Kyrgios. I think he's the best obviously. talker. Yeah. If I wanted to watch a tennis match, it'd definitely be Nick Kyrgios. Yeah, it's just most entertaining. I think, guys, we can end it there. Uh, thanks, Alex, for coming on. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. 
Uh, we're gonna, the next podcast will probably be Hector Pardo, world record holder. Everybody knows that already. Yeah, congratulations. Uh, yeah, and uh, well, thank you, Alex. I yeah. hope you have a good time yeah, on the casting you. couch. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Alex. Yeah. All right, guys. See you next week. Bye.